Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning as we celebrate together this fifth Sunday after Easter. Glad that you are with us this morning. Also want to welcome in all those who are listening in on the radio this morning. And we give thanks to Lynn and Brenda Moss for the gift of the radio broadcast today in memory of their son, Justin. I also want to wish congratulations to all of our Milbank graduates who graduate this afternoon. And so we will be holding them in prayer as they celebrate this milestone in their life today. Just a few other announcements to bring to your attention this morning before we begin our worship. Please stick around right after the service. Um, We'll be entering into a congregational meeting to discuss our lighting here in the sanctuary. Um, And so we'll just have a quick prelude and then, but if you want to just stick around here and we'll have our meeting and then we'll um, head to coffee and fellowship after that. Um, So please stick around for that today. Cookbooks are here. If you haven't picked up your cookbooks, um, they're down in the Sunday School room. If you have pre-ordered them, they're all bagged up, ready to go with your name on it. Um, And so if you just head down into the education wing, you'll see the sign pointing you to the room to pick those up if you haven't picked them up. And then there are more for sale as well if you haven't purchased any yet. Um, Feel free to do that today as well. In the bulletin, um, there are a few volunteer opportunities, and we're looking for some help in the office this summer as um, our Gail and Carol take some vacation time and will be out of the office, so just looking for some volunteers to help with the phones and some light duties in the office. If you'd be willing to do that sometime this summer, please let us know. And then we also are preparing for our new church directory. Um, Photos will be taken in July, so kind of mark those dates on your calendar. Um, But we need to do some work with our membership list and getting that all organized before the photo company comes here in July. And so we're looking for some volunteers just to help us go through our list and contact people and uh, make sure all of the information is correct so it's correct when it gets printed into the directory. Um, So if you'd be willing to help with that, please let us know as well. Um, That'll just take some man hours to get through everyone on our list and make sure all the addresses and phone numbers and Names and all of that are correct. So um, a couple of volunteer opportunities for this summer if you'd like to help out. With that, I'll invite you to please stand as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. And we gather for worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. All right. That's different than what's in my book, but it's all good. So, let us pray. Gracious Father, you sent your Son to die and rise to new life in order that death might be brought to an end and that we might live a new life in him. Yet we confess that we too often have chosen to remain captive to doubt and fear and ways that lead to death. By our thoughts, words, and actions, we have scorned your love, diminished the lives of others, and defaced your image in us. Father, forgive us for Jesus' sake and enable us by his resurrection power to live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. Amen. God, our Creator, gives us new life. Christ, our Redeemer, prepares a table for us. Holy Spirit, our joy, calls us to service. This is the good news. The tomb is empty, sin is powerless, and death is defeated forever. On this day and every day, we walk as God's people, forgiven and made whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our call to worship song is Open Up the Heavens. Lord. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. O Lord God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love that made alive by your Spirit we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. first reading chosen for today is from the 11th chapter of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. 
There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it, I closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times, and everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Word of God, word of life. God. Now we'll read Psalm 148 responsively by full verse. Hallelujah, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, sun and moon, sing praise all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded, and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name is only exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heavens. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel. Our second reading today is a reading from the 21st chapter of Revelations. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Word of God, word of life. And please stand if you are able for the gospel. This is the This is 
Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. This part of the gospel comes from the night of the Last Supper when Jesus is gathering with his disciples and he had just called out to Judas for his betrayal. And so we continue. It says, When he had gone out, and that is when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. And so I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated and I invite the children to come forward for our children's message this morning. Well, good morning, everyone. How are you guys? Good. Well, I'm gonna ha- I have a little test for you today to see if you can identify some animals for me. So we're going to start with this one down in the corner. What's that called? Elephant. How do you know it's an elephant? How do you know it's an elephant? Just because? The trunk? How else? It's, elephants are usually gray, right? His big ears and his tusk. All right. What about this one? Giraffe. 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 How do you know it's a giraffe? It has a long neck, right? Orange. And it's orange. Good. Yeah. How about this one up in this corner? Zebra. zebra. How do you know it's a zebra? Black and, white Black and white stripes. That's right. How about this one? Do you know what this one is? A rhinoceros. a rhinoceros. Why is that? It has one big horn, right? That's kind of his identifying feature. And the last one in the middle, what's that one? Lion. lion. And how do we know it's a lion? The mane, right? The mane. So all of these animals have something that kind of identifies them, that helps us know what it is and who it is and what kind of animal it is. So I have a question for you. How do people know that we are Christians? How do people know that we follow Jesus? Do you have any idea? All the people that follow Jesus don't have stripes, right? Or have long necks or, or a big elephant trunk, right? So there's nothing that, like, that when we look at us that tells people that we follow Jesus. So how do you think people know that we come to church and that we love Jesus and that we believe in God? Do you guys have any idea? Well, Jesus told us this morning, and He said, if you love one another... That's how people will know that you are my disciples. That's how people know that we follow Jesus. 
is by how we act, right? Because we are people of love and care for other people because that's what God taught us to do. And so that's how people know that we are Christians and that we follow Jesus is because we love one another and we treat them with kindness and we care for those who are in need and who may be hurting and we pray for them and we just love one another. And so that's our challenge today on this day from God. God tells us that we should love one another. And sometimes that's kind of easy, right? To love one another, but sometimes it's kind of hard, right? So sometimes it's something we have to work at in our lives is to love one another. And so that's our challenge for this week is for all of us to love other people so that then they know that we believe in Jesus and that we have God in our hearts. So will you guys please pray with me? Dear God, help us to love other people just as you have loved us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up this morning. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, way back when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to attend two national youth gatherings with the ELCA, and those gatherings were hoping to go and take some kids here in 2021 in a couple of years. The next one is in Minneapolis. But it takes a little work and a little fundraising in order to do that. And so the cookbooks are the start of our fundraising. But I remember back when I was in high school, we were doing all sorts of things, from tearing off shingles off of roofs for people to serving soup suppers and dinners and anything you could think of in order to raise the funds we needed to attend this gathering. The first one I went to was in Atlanta, the second one down in New Orleans. And so it was quite a travel cost in the cost was quite a bit that we needed to raise. Well, after a while, some of us who were at every single fundraising event realized that there were some of the kids that were planning to go on this trip that were never at any of these fundraising events. They weren't there at 5 o'clock in the morning to rip off shingles off of this apartment, and they weren't there serving coffee after church, and they weren't there bringing food for the soup dinners that we had. And after a while, some of us kids were getting pretty frustrated. This isn't fair, right? This isn't fair that we have to do all the work and then these kids can receive some of this money too and they get to go on the trip without having to work for it. It didn't seem very fair to us. And our youth leaders got us together and they began to realize that some of us were getting kind of frustrated and we wanted to start kind of to control how, of, how these gifts that we were getting as a youth group were being distributed and were being cared for. And they got us together one night and they reminded us that these gifts were gifts to the entire youth group. And they were gifts from the people. And they weren't really our decision of how those gifts should be used. It was up to the youth leaders and it was for the entire youth group that those gifts were given. And so kind of set us back and made us realize where these gifts were coming from. And so eventually all the money was raised and we went on the trip and the kids that didn't show up as often as some of the kids that showed up, we all got to go together and we actually had a wonderful trip and it was good that all of us were there together. But for a while it seemed awfully unfair to us. And maybe you've been in situations in your life that have been like that as well, where just things haven't turned out how you think they should have gone, and it seemed really unfair, and you wanted to scream out, like our picture here this morning, that it's not fair. And that's where Peter found himself this morning in our first reading. Peter had gone to the, the Gentiles, to those outside of Israel, and started to share the good news and what had happened with Jesus on the cross and the resurrection on Easter morning. And then he came back to Jerusalem, and some in Jerusalem 
those Pharisees and the Israelites were not very happy. And they shouted, tried to shout to Peter, it's not fair. Why are you going and having dinner with the uncircumcised? Why are you going and sharing the good news with the Gentiles? You have to remember for the Israelites, they thought they were God's chosen people. That's what we hear about all throughout the Old Testament until Jesus comes and changes everything and says He came for the whole world to show the whole world of God's love. And so these Israelite leaders were not very happy with Peter. They wanted to hold God all to themselves and to control God's gifts of love and grace and mercy. And Peter begins to explain to them what happened. And he begins to explain that the Holy Spirit came to me and then the Holy Spirit poured out onto the people of the Gentiles. And God came, came to them and filled them with His love and His mercy and His grace. And eventually even the Israelites began to see what was happening. And we get to verse 17 and Peter says this, he says, if then God gave them the same gift that He gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? And by that statement then, the others began to realize that God was not only just for them, but God was for all the world and even for the Gentiles. And they say in verse 18, the very next verse, it says, when they had heard this, they were silenced. And then they praised God and they said, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. And they began to realize that they cannot control the gifts of God's love and His grace and His mercy. But unfortunately, some 2,000 years later, we still struggle with this. We still struggle with wanting to get into these arguments and still want to control God's love in our life and in our world. We still have people who want to decide who deserves God's love and who doesn't. Who should be welcomed in our churches and who should not be welcomed. What churches we should associate with and what denominations we should avoid and not be in communion with. Those judgments are not our judgments to be, to be making. God's gifts of love and His forgiveness and His gift of eternal life are His to give. It's not for us to decide. And we get so wrapped up in making those judgments about, about others, we forget that we ourselves are only a part of God's family, are only a part of this community of faith because God first loved us because of God's grace that He has given to us. See, because we ourselves do not deserve these gifts that God has given us. We ourselves have fallen short of God's glory. We fail to keep those commandments that God has given us. And yet through His grace, through His incredible love for us, we are welcomed here. And He loves us and He invites us to be a part of His family. And He gives that same invitation to all those in the world. And it's not for us to decide who is in and who is out, and who gets God's love and who does not. Jesus tells us this morning to love one another. Just as I have loved you, love one another. By that, those will know that we are His disciples. So as I challenge the kids, I challenge you today to go out and love one another, to make sure everyone knows that they are welcome here in this place and that God has a place for them in His family and in His community of faith, that He will love them and He will give them His mercy and His forgiveness and He has a gift for them of eternal life waiting for them, just as He has done for each and every one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. Open up the sky, fall down like rain. We don't want blessings, we want you. Open up the sky. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Let us join together in prayer for the church, for the world, and all those, for all those who are in need. Lord God, we give you thanks this day for your incredible love that you pour out upon us, for forgiving us and welcoming us here in this place, despite our sinfulness and our brokenness. Help us to go out into the world and share that love with all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, this day we especially pray for the graduates of Millbank High School and for all those who are graduating from college or high schools around, around the world this day. 
We pray that you would bless them as they celebrate their accomplishments and be with them as they look to the future and what is to come for them. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we do ask that you fall down like rain into our lives. But we also pray this day for sunshine and for warm weather. Lord, that you would bless us with with the spring and the, may you dry out the land that the crops may be planted. And may you give us the sunshine that will renew and refresh each and every one of us. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray also this day for all those who are hurting, for all those who are in need of your loving care and your tender, cut, and your tender touch. We pray especially this day for Cheryl Polly, for Wade Frost, for Ron Bjerke, for Ken Halquist, for Ben Walford and for Ty Schaefer, for Jody Welberg and for Arlene Schluter, for Ken Keller and for Rick Bone, and for all those that we name in our heart. Lord, grant them healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Let us share God's peace with one another.
work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Please stand. And let us pray. Risen one, as you broke the bread with the disciples on the shore, meet us now in this meal. Nourish us to follow you, using our gifts to feed the hungry and tend the weary, and all for your love's sake. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, gives everyone a place at the welcome table. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The Lord's table is ready. Please come. You find 
complete rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace, both now and forever. Amen. This day we will also be sending out home communion to our shut-ins and homebound members, and so let us pray a prayer of blessing. O God of tender compassion, as you healed the sick and welcomed the stranger, bless those who leave this assembly to share the gifts of this table with our sisters and brothers who are sick and homebound. May they be sustained by the love and prayers of this community and by the bread of life that satisfies all hunger. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And then let us pray. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the, may, may the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And please join in our sending him the only name.
Go in peace. Serve the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I invite you not to go quite yet. Please stay for the meeting. I'll invite um, our president, Brian Johnson, to come forward, and he will chair our meeting for us this morning.